Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the gas station. Joe's going to do a chat. Uh, let's see what's happening. Monday, January 22nd. It warmed up today. We're up in the high 30s we got up to. So maybe our uh, Arctic blast, the polar vortex, the winter weather, <laughs> it's passed for a while because... According to the Weather Channel, next two weeks going to be in the 40s and 50s. A lot of rain, but, you know, better than snow. Uh, I hate the cold. I'm not afraid to admit it. I hated it all my life. I've hated it. Now, we did a can't. Now, I'm not, a, you know, it's like this weekend I hibernated at home. I didn't even go out to the cabin. There was nothing out there that had to be done. It's all snow covered. It got more uh, snow than we got here in Wheeling. And uh, so I didn't even, didn't even go. I did the live stream from my house Saturday night, which was a good live stream, man. We had a blast. I love it. People are joining that never, you know, just discovered I do them. We're a friendly group. So plan on joining us on Saturday nights. Yeah, what's happening? cold weather camping I was uh, damn the interruptions <laughs> uh, I was gonna tell you something about winter camping I you know when I had the Boy Scout troop we scheduled our camp out six months ahead we, you know twice a year we'd have a meeting we do six months for the camp outs we had a December camp out at Lake Houston that's when I lived in Cincinnati. Our campouts were three-day week. You know, we'd go Friday afternoon, and we'd come back Sunday afternoon. So, we were going to Lake Houston. Got up there Friday afternoon. It was 10 degrees. There was four inches of snow on the ground. We had to set up camp. We had tents. We didn't do buildings, you know, no cabins or anything. We set up our tents, we set up the dining fly, we got a big fire going, and uh, that's how we camp. We didn't cancel campouts, regardless of the weather. Our troop did not cancel campouts. We all learned from all this stuff. So, one of the things we had, our, our usual meetings was Tuesday before, you know, the weekends. At that Tuesday meeting, I had asked all the parents to show up so we could go over. We knew what kind of weather we were going to be running into for the weekend. And the parents that couldn't attend, I sent home a list of all the things they needed for this cold weather camp out. And, you know, sure enough, <laughs> there were two boys that showed up. They had tennis shoes. That was it. It's going to be snowing and freezing all weekend. And they're in tennis shoes. So once again, <laughs> you know, I, I wound up going to Kmart. I, you know, I didn't want to drive all the way back to Cincinnati. So I wound up going to Kmart, buying them boys boots and some wool socks. And, you know, it's amazing how much money as a scoutmaster you spend uh, over stuff like that. And I mean, it's okay. It was, to me, it was worth it. Just, you know, it was, a great experience for everybody but we went to bed we went to our tent Saturday night and you learn a few things and I try to teach the boys if you have to pee during the middle of the night you get up and you go pee I don't care the temperature your body is going to use all of its energy to keep your urine warm so if you feel the urge to go pee go pee and then get back in your bag uh, and whatever clothes you're wearing the next day put them in the bag with you so that you're at least putting on warm clothes. Uh, you know, little things like that. Your boots go underneath your sleeping bag, under your legs, you know. Uh, because Saturday morning, I woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning. It was minus 6 in my tent. That wasn't counting the wind outside coming off the lake. It was minus 6. Uh, and I had to get up, get dressed, get the boys up get a fire going again, get breakfast started in the dining fly. 
Oh, man. But you know what? We loved it. We absolutely loved it. It was a great weekend. We left Sunday afternoon. Uh, Saturday night, Saturday afternoon, I ran out of wood. I had a pickup truck that all I did was, you know, I hauled the propane tanks and I hauled wood to camp outs. Uh, we ran out of wood. There, we were in a park, a state park, and there was the ranger station there. They had a bunch of wood that they sold during, you know, camping season. But obviously nobody there. And I happened to find a ranger in the park, you know, driving through, and I waved him down. I said, look, I got a Boy Scout troop out here. We're running out of firewood. You know, if it's possible, I'd like to buy what you have, you know, some of what you have there so I don't have to make a trip back to Cincinnati. And he's like, you brought a Boy Scout troop out here in this weather? I said, well, hell yeah. <laughs> we, we don't care to camp out because it might be a little cold. And that guy was like, you know what, if you guys are willing to do this, he went over and unlocked that gate. He said, use all the wood you need. Don't worry about it. I'm like, all right, right on, you know. Uh, but we had a blast. We left Sunday afternoon. We got home and, you know, nobody's worse for wear. We survived it all. But I still don't like cold weather, period. Nothing I like about it. So what I'm going to talk about tonight involves cold weather. Wheeling, like all big cities, Wheeling's not a big city. Wheeling's 25, 27,000 people maybe. I don't know. The Ohio Valley obviously has a lot more. But we have a problem. We have a homeless problem crisis here like everywhere and nowadays whenever anybody thinks homeless they immediately think drug addict they're all drug addicts out there well they're not all drug addicts there are drug addicts yes they're not all drug addicts you have mentally challenged people you know they have no place else to go right you have people who just simply want to be homeless because I was homeless. I know what it's like. You have no responsibilities to anything. You know, when I decided I didn't want to be homeless, I quit being homeless. I did a video about that. But it's interesting what, what happened this past week. And that's why I'm doing this video. There's another, the growing element of the homeless population is the working poor. There are a lot of homeless people you see out there that have jobs. They're trying to get enough money together to get a place to live. You know, you've got the Wheeling uh, uh, Homeless Coalition right, that tries to find apartments for these people. But you have to have, you know, birth certificates and IDs and social security, you have to have all the stuff that a lot of homeless people lose. Um, and it takes time. It's a long process to get through all of this, to get into something. Because the homelessness is a crisis. Uh, I read somewhere, I think, now don't quote me on these numbers, but between the YWCA, the Salvation Army, Catholic Charities, Youth System Services, the Winter Freeze thing, I think there's like 116 or 166 beds available every night, right? Well, Wheeling has a homeless population they know of, of at least 250. It's way more than that, but there's 250 that these uh, agencies and advocates for the homeless interact with on a daily basis. Um, so it's much more homeless than we have spots available for them. So they have to live in encampments. They have to live in tents. They have to live, you know, with their tents, sleeping bags, you know, whatever they can do to survive. Um, in Wheeling, you know, word got around the whatever, the Wheeling was the place to go if you're homeless and a drug addict. Because there are agencies here that do wonderful jobs with them, considering what they have to work with. Um, you've got Catholic Charities, 
and I don't agree a lot with Cat a lot that Catholic Charities does, but I agree with some things. Um, you know, there the the homeless can eat, they can shower, they can do laundry. Uh, right down the street's the soup kitchen where they can go to get lunch. You know, and then I think there's a place that does dinners. I don't know. Uh, I wasn't homeless in Wheeling lately, but. There are groups, there are organizations uh, besides Catholic Charities. You got the House of Hager. Uh, you've got this organization called Street Moms. And they take donation, people donate to them sleeping bags and tents and, and cold weather gear, clothing, foods. They take them out to these encampments and take them out to the homeless people to make sure that they can at least get under shelter. And see, that's one of the big lies of the government, too. They tell you, oh, we've got, look how many less homeless people we have now since I've taken office. Well, what they did was change the, the verbiage, right? If you're in a tent or you're in a car or you're in a shelter, you're not considered homeless anymore. They only count the unsheltered. Right. I don't know about you, but when I was sleeping in my car, when I was sleeping at the Salvation Army, I was homeless. I didn't have a home. You know, I, I wasn't unsheltered, but I didn't have a home. I was homeless. Anyway, uh, you've got street moms. These people don't get paid. They're volunteers. And it's amazing the work they put into this and the time they put into it. Uh, there's a thing called Project Hope. Um, it's doctors and nurses. They go out to these encampment, encampments and offer medical aid to these people uh, just to check up on them and make sure they're doing okay, if, you know. Uh, so it, it, there is that, and that I'm so proud of the fact that these people are willing to do that. Um, but that doesn't solve the problem. You know, we, we need a solution for the problem. And not the solution the city of Wheeling came up with, which is what I want to talk about. Because that was a slap in the face to everybody involved in this, in my opinion. Um, they passed an ordinance in October, November, of last year that there could be no camping in Wheeling no camping on public property in Wheeling right? these people are camped along the river right you have the heritage trail that goes along the river bike trail and hiking trail walk, walking trail that people use yeah it's bad that they're camped and camped along that the river there because you know when you are walking down there you see all of them I don't walk through there uh, unarmed. <laughs> I don't ride my bike. I don't walk it after dark. And even during the day when I do it, I can take care of myself. A lot of people don't or can't. So we don't. they don't get to use the trail anymore because they're scared of that. And I understand that. We want them gone. We don't want to see that kind of stuff. I mean, I understand people's uh, wanting them to be gone uh, so it, it's it's like a catch-22 and I hate being in the position I'm in because I understand totally their situation but I also as a private citizen and somebody who uses the, the Heritage Trail and who lives three blocks from the river I understand I don't want them around because there are uh, there is a criminal element involved and there's a lot of crime between the homeless people at these encampments. Uh, the, it uses a lot of police resources, a lot of uh, medical resources, uh, ambulances and stuff. So yeah, it's, I, I can see that being an issue. There has to be a solution and a more humane solution than what the city of Wheeling came up with. What I say is shame on the city of Wheeling, right? They passed that ordinance, no camping. 
it, you know, effective this year. So in East Wheeling, that the, the uh, damn, I can't even think of the building now. Anyway, there was a pretty good size encampment there on the hillside. Not around, it's not in a neighborhood, you know. Uh, but they had put up signs that said that they were going to evict everybody in that encampment. They had to evacuate, they had to get out. So, you got the, the House of Hager, you've got the ACLU, everybody's putting in, you know, trying to get a stay for this and stop this from happening, right? And it didn't come through. Now, one of the things I mentioned was the growing part of the homeless are the working poor. That Some of these people have jobs, they just have no place to live. Because the wages don't pay enough to pay what the landlords want for apartments and houses. A few years ago, we had the oil workers here, the big natural gas and oil boom and pipeliners. And they paid ridiculous amounts of money. Chesapeake Energy paid, you know, $2,000 a month for a house uh, for, for these people. And these slumlords kicked out all of their regular tenants so that they could jack up the prices and get in on some of that money. Well, they're all gone now. The prices haven't come back down yet. So these people can't afford it. I understand it. Nick lives at home with us because he can't afford a place to live on what he makes. If my house wasn't paid for already and I don't have a house payment or a rent payment or anything, I'm not sure how we could do it with you know what I got going I mean I'm on social security I'm retired I'm working a part time job Gail's on social security she works part time you know I, yesterday I went by the store I needed a gallon of milk and a loaf of bread that's all we needed I wasn't going all the way to the grocery store a three quarter they sell milk in three quarter gallons down here a three quarter gallon of milk was three dollars and ninety nine cents and a loaf of bread was three dollars and forty cents Almost eight dollars with tax for bread and milk. You know, so I know what it's like. I mean, I've got a two hundred and fifty dollar electric bill, and I got a two hundred and sixty dollar gas bill that has to be paid in a couple of you know next week, this week when I get my Social Security check. So I know the struggle. There are people in these homeless encampments that are one or two paychecks away from having enough money to make that deposit to get off of the street, to get out of the homeless encampment. There are people in these homeless encampments that are waiting on their birth certificates that uh, street moms and house of payers that helps them apply and get this stuff. But they can't do anything until they get that replaced. Um, and they're waiting on that. That's the kind of stuff they're facing. It's, it's not easy to go to the Wheeling uh, Homeless Coalition or Wheeling, Wheeling Housing Coalition, whatever it is, and have them find you a place to live. There's a lot of red tape involved in that kind of stuff. So it's not an immediate fix. There is no immediate fix for it. What the city of Wheeling did was a Band-Aid that stuck to the wound. Right? I say, again, shame on the city of Wheeling for what they did. They put up the signs, you're going to be a victim. They showed up Thursday morning in the middle of winter storm warnings and sub-zero wind chill weather and snow. They show up with bulldozers and dump trucks at the encampment at 7.30 in the morning. Right? Most of the people, now, there were emergency places opened up that had mattresses that people could stay out of the sub-zero temperatures. Again, you can go there at 8 o'clock at night, you have to be out at 8 o'clock in the morning, you know, stuff like that. Well, these people were, were leaving their personal belongings in the tents, spending the night in these emergency shelters, and then... You know, they would go back to their tents when they got kicked out of the shelters. Well, the city of Wheeling showed up. The last, I think, some of these people heard that, you know, UCLA and all these uh, 
UCLA. The uh, ACLU, uh, they were trying to get a stay, an injunction against this. You know, nobody knew what was really going on. City of Willing shows up. People have two hours to get their personal belongings out of there. The rest of us go into the dump. There were some people at work. They had to try to get to where they worked and get them back there. You know, make them lose work to try to salvage whatever they could get. I know one guy personally that was one week, this Friday, he was going to have his paycheck that would be enough for the deposit and the first month's rent on a place to live. All of his stuff is gone. How is that a solution to the problem? You know? If you're going to do that, fine. Bulldoze it all down. But have a solution to do, you know, how to house these people. How to do something. You can't just bulldoze it all down and say, okay, you know, be gone. Problem's over with. That encampment's gone. It doesn't work that way. You know, that's going to lead to more crime because people are going to be breaking into shit. It's going to lead to squat, more squatting. You know, it just, that's natural. That's the way it's going to be. I don't like the fact that the city of Wheeling treated these people like subhumans, like they aren't humans. They're human beings. They might have drug problems. They might be a drug addict. They might have uh, mental issues you know they might want to be homeless it doesn't matter the situation they're all different all different reasons they're human they're fellow human beings who deserve a show of compassion dignity you know you don't treat them like that i don't i don't care you don't treat them like that unless you have a solution for them you have to give them an alternative. You can't just say, be gone. Because they're going to pop up somewhere else. You know, they come in here. I give them drinks, you know, uh, when it's really hot out. I give them snacks. We don't have food here. I'll buy them drinks. I'll buy them snacks, you know. They come through here. I don't have a problem with them. Um... Uh, don't comment on here either. Well, I know this one guy. He panhandles over here and he makes all this money. You're going to have certain people like that. But I'm looking at the big picture. I'm not looking at that one person that gives a bad name to the homeless. Or this couple of people that gives a bad name. I don't, you know, I don't look at that. I look at the whole thing. Uh, that was not the way to do it. Period. You know, now street moms, that whole group, and and their helpers, the the a, a lot of the community showed up to try to help these people when the bulldozers showed up, and they were all live streaming on on Facebook. You know, uh, all the bulldozers putting all that stuff into dump trucks and it go into the city dump. Uh, and what do the people do? They got to wander around. Now, everything that they had to keep them warm is gone. But there's nobody there to to help them. You know, there, there's, there, there's only so much you can do. Kicking the can down the street is not a solution. And that's what the city of Wheeling did. They went through, they bulldozed that whole camp down. Yep, there's it's there's garbage there. You know, they don't have bathroom facilities. They don't have this. They don't have that. I, I understand that. You know, we don't want that. I don't want that in my neighborhood. But there has to be a better way of doing it. That's all I can say. Now, we have our mayor. Filed paperwork Friday, I think Friday, one day last week. He's running for Senate. He wants to take Joe Manson's seat. Glenn Elliott does. So, yeah, sorry about the interruption again. So, yeah, we have uh, Rosemary Ketchum, first transgendered council woman. 
Anyway, she filed paperwork to run for Glenn Elliott's seat as mayor. And a few years ago, they had a meeting on the homeless and some wanting to get ideas. She was running for council then. So she was everywhere doing everything. And at that meeting, I mean, there were some pretty good ideas brought up. Uh, she had some good ideas. She got elected to council. Nothing has been done. Right. She's running for Glenn Elliott's seat as mayor, like I said. He's running for Senate. Is this the way you're going to handle problems? Right? I know it's tough what to do. But what I'm telling you is bulldozing down their encampment and not giving them another option is not the way to handle it. Period. You have got to do better than that. I realize the homeless are not voters. You know, they're not going to vote for you either way. <laughs> but that's no way to treat them. Absolutely not. I don't know what the solution is. I have no advice because I don't know. I just know that was wrong. And it's wrong because we are building tent cities. We are transferring illegal migrants who are invading our country. We are giving them transportation wherever they want. In Maine, they built apartments for them that they can live in for free for two years. If they get a job within that two years, then they have to pay 30% of their pay for their rent. Right? They get a cash allotment of food stamps and all this kind of stuff. Right? That's for illegal migrants. They're willing to do all of that stuff for them. You can't do it for America. These are American citizens. These are fellow human beings. There are homeless veterans being kicked out of these uh, encampments. Right? We can't take care of our own, but we're going to take care of 10 million new immigrants. Right? Something is wrong here. In Morgantown, I read they opened up a shelter, an emergency homeless shelter, for the LGBTQ community. You have to be a member of that community to use that homeless shelter. Really? A group that is all about inclusivity and whatever the hell it's called. But no, if you're not LGBT or Q or plus or whatever, you don't get to stay in that shelter. You know, they're human beings. They need to be treated like human beings. You know? You have to come up with a better answer. You don't just simply bulldoze it over. You know, I don't want them in my community. I don't want them in anybody else's community. But I am not going to just bulldoze down what little they have to keep them alive and tell them to move on. I can't do that. You know, your job with all the money we pay in taxes, especially in West Virginia, your job is to find a solution for this. I love your house, Rosemary. I love what you're doing to it and to try all the traveling you're doing as a transgender councilwoman. But that's not what I want to see on Facebook all the time. I want to see your ideas of what you're going to do. You want to be the mayor of my city. You address this situation and tell me how you're going to rectify it. What your ideas are on it. What you would like to see happen. You know? It makes me mad. Because I don't know what you do. But I know I don't want to see 10 million people who are... Uh, invading our country get all of this treatment get the money, get the housing, get the tents get all of this 
and our American citizens don't get it. Our American veterans don't get it. Come up with a better solution. Something we can vote on. You know, don't think you're going to be able to kick them down to Benwood or, or, or McMicken or Moundsville. You know, that's it's like that's what you're trying to do. If we evict them from here, they'll have to go somewhere else. We'll make it somebody else's problem. I don't know. <laughs> Be humans. <laughs> you know, treat them like human beings. Don't treat them like a homeless drug addict. Treat them like a human being. Yeah, Some of them don't want the help. I understand that. But not everybody. And like I said, what has to be, I don't have all the figures. I don't have all that in front of me, so I don't know. I'm thinking out loud here while I'm talking. But I think what has to be the largest growing sector of the homeless crisis are the working poor. Because I know a lot of these homeless people work jobs. But look at what they get paid, and then look at the cost of living. It doesn't match up. They're doing the only thing they can do to survive and to live. And you're taking that away from them. They have no other options. The only thing they can do, they take away from you. You give one exemption out for a place where they could put a tent, put up tents, as long as it's governed and somebody's responsible for it, besides you. Because you don't want to take the responsibility for it. I don't know. I just, at the end, I just want to say thank you to Street Moms, to House of Hager, to the Catholic Charities, to the Sal uh, Salvation Army, the YWCA, uh, the Soup Kitchen, Project Hope, everybody. You guys do a bang-up job and a much underappreciated job, I think. I don't think enough people know what you go through, you know, but at least you're trying. At least you try to show a little humanity in not ending the situation, but at least trying to make it them feel like they're humans and that somebody cares about them. So thank you all for doing all that. That's all I got to say about it. Come up with a solution. Damn it. That's what I task you with, Glenn Elliott. If you want me to vote for you to be a senator, you figure out what to do in my city first. Rosemary, if you want to take that seat, you show me what you're willing to do, what you think needs to be done. And I'll support you. But this is not the way to get my support. This is Joe at the gas station. You know, thank you for letting me rant. I'm out.